All right. Hey, everyone. I hope you're having fun at Embedded World this year. It's been a pretty fun event, and it's really nice to get back and meet everyone in person. So I'm really thankful that you're joining us here in such a large audience as well. First, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Gordon Markush, and I'm working as a Silicon Alliance's partner manager at Canonical. And you might be familiar with Canonical. It's the company behind Ubuntu. And today, what we're going to be talking about is what we are doing at Canonical to make Linux easy on Risk v essentially. And the first thing that I want to address right now is that how did we actually start our efforts with Risk v As you might know at Canonical, we're an open source first company, and we truly believe in open source, has, that open source has the power to change the world. So that's why we started working with a lot of our hardware partners and silicon partners to start porting Ubuntu, the most popular, popular open source operating systems, to uh, Risk v And it really is the case that open source has the power to transform the world, as well as Risk v is probably inevitable, and that's why we really want to support the efforts in this community to take that next step forward. First of all, let's talk about the availability of, uh, let's say, how to get started with Linux on Risk v and what is the availability of our images on multiple different Risk v platforms, essentially. So I think that the first entry point, usually, when you get started with Ubuntu, is to start downloading an image, right? And then you essentially go to the web page that is our CD images. And right now, we release our Jammy uh, Jellyfish release, 2204, just a couple of months ago. And we also have that release available for both the Sci-5, Sci High 5 Unmatched, and Kimu architectures. So it comes as a pre-installed server image, as well as a server installer image that you're able to download on the following web page right there. But our journey started much earlier than that, even in 2021. But I think that you would always like to benefit from the latest and greatest. So that's why I'm pointing you to the image that you found can find here. And let's imagine right now that you don't have any hardware available at home, but you would still like to experiment with Linux on Risk v So what would you do, essentially, then? Then I would encourage you to start using the virtual platform, which is the Kimo one. And you can also basically follow a few really basic steps to start uh, trying out Risk v with Linux, essentially. And those steps will be essentially to install all the prerequisites, download and unpack the image, as well as boot the virtual machine. There are some configuration parameters that you can see here that are really specific for OpenSBI and U-Boot Kimu. And then you will switch on the serial console and wait for cloud init to complete. And once that is done, you would log in with Ubuntu Ubuntu. And essentially, this Kimu image that you're seeing here that you're able to download is actually the same one that is, can be used on the Sci-5 unmatched board at the same time. So as you might see right here, uh, starting with Risk v is really easy, actually, even though you might think, oh, this is going to be quite hard. But just booting up Kimu and using this set of commands will enable you to start experimenting with Linux on Risk v And then you might ask yourself, what is the next step? What are you going to do next after you are booting up Linux on your Risk v emulated uh, platform? So the next step usually would be that you would try to install something on your Linux distribution. And you, there's always a well-known command that is like sudo opt-get install. And this is where we want to point you at that with using Ubuntu on Risk v you get access to a broad ecosystem of open source software packages. So it's not just the Linux distribution itself, but it goes beyond that. So you're tapping into the whole spectrum of open source by using Ubuntu on Risk v Now, you might ask yourself, what is the status of open source on Risk v And this is also something that I want to address in the following slides. As you might see right now, the package management system in Ubuntu and some of the more conventional architectures, such as AMD64 and ARM64, hosts more than 60,000 different open source software packages. With Risk v uh, that number is lower. It's not substantially lower, but it's still you can see there is a gap. And we at Canonical, together with a broader community, are working quite a lot 
to actually bridge this gap, to enable all the runtimes, the programming languages, virtualization, and all of that that you might find in other architectures also on RISC-V. And this is, I think, really important that uh, the parity of this open source software ecosystem at risk five reaches the same one as in other architectures because in the end of the day that's how all the applications are enabled and this is what we're planning to do now uh, just to reiterate about that it really is so that by running ubuntu on risk five you're able to tap in to the broader open source ecosystem. And that might range from different applications, from something that you might run in the server, in your IoT device, maybe like databases, or any other type of open source applications. And now, going forward, what we want to talk about is what is next on our roadmap. And I'm going to also show you some specific open source items that we're working on, as well as some other stuff that we're doing. I think that the first thing that I want to mention on our roadmap is that I showed you an example of the Kimu image that's, that's using the Sci-5 unmatched board uh, image, essentially. But our goal is to support additional RISC-V platforms. Right now, you can see in our booth, we are running on two different ones as well. And we'll publish those images in the following months. So this is also quite cool. Uh, so our goal is really to support a multitude of different RISC-V platforms and so that the uh, our developers and the whole ecosystem can benefit from the same Ubuntu development experience no matter which hardware platform they're using. At the same time, we are also working quite heavily on enabling high-performance compute and networking open source packages together with our partners. This is due to the specificities of these applications and that there might be demand for RISC-V silicon in these use cases. For example, Open vSwitch, RDMA Core, DPDK, and SPDK. So there's quite a lot of effort done uh, inside of Canonical in enabling these inside of our package management system and in the broader open source ecosystem. Along with that, we're also enabling embedded edge and IoT devices. So my colleague had a talk yesterday about snaps on uh, RISC-V. We're also enabling microcates and MIR, which is the display server we're using for embedded devices. So essentially what we really want to do is to have the full spectrum all the way from the data center to embedded devices enabled on Ubuntu and on top of RISC-V, right? So this is not something that can happen in one day because there's a quite a lot of effort in bridging that gap, but we're actively working on that inside of Canonical to make that happen. And going forward, you can learn more and you can follow the news on the following website. This is the one stated here, ubuntu.com slash risk five. And also you'll be able to download the images and follow the instructions that I showed you today. So I would encourage you all who have the ability to, or the will to try that, they can try it and they can also get in touch with us and see what actually happened, how did it went and so on. So they can contact us. Then you can contact me directly with gordon.marcus at canonical.com. Or we also have a discourse forum at discourse.ubuntu.com. There you can also follow all of our development. It's quite open and you'll be seeing all the new platforms we're working on, as well as the open source packages we're planning to include, and any additional features and the work that we're doing with RISC-V and beyond that. Um, and of course, stay tuned for more, because there's a lot of more exciting stuff happening, and we're really looking for your feedback, right? Because everything that we're doing here is really to increase the footprint and the ecosystem of developers using RISC-V, and we really want to encourage everyone to start using it and experimenting with it and bring feedback back to us and to tell us, hey, could you focus on this or maybe on that? Because that's the type of feedback that we're really looking forward to. And by the way, thanks a lot for joining me in such a huge crowd, and I hope you all had fun at the event.